down last week of the year. Hopefully. Oh, yeah? We'll see if they make the playoffs. I'm not going anywhere. My family's going on vacation. Your family's going to go on vacation without you, and you're going to dog on a run and stay it's here? It's going to have to happen. Wow. Look at the dedication from one AB5. <laughs> not, that is not dedication. That's, <laughs> That's just stupid. Pure 100% stupidity. All right, we're setting things up here. We're going to do grade the team in a second. Tim is back uh, in, uh, in Georgia, and he's hanging out another. We're going to go down there in a second. We're also going to go to the KennyRoda.com studios as well. Eric, the referee. Uh, you want to tee us up for this grading segment, please? Yes, um, he's been getting a lot of slack, but he's 10 and 4 all time, and he threw for 300 yards again. Grade Brian Hoyer. Well, when it comes to the quarterback, we start with the quarterback, and that is Tim Couch. Grade the quarterback. You got, I, I gave him an A. I know it wasn't pretty. I know all that. I know he didn't play well at times. He made some really bad decisions at times, but I go back when the game's on the line, the guy. Shook off all that happened during the game, all those bad decisions, all those bad throws. He let his team down, put them in position on a game-winning field goal. And, uh, you know, that's what it's about at the quarterback position. Win the football game on the road in that environment, a game they had to have. I, I give him an A for that effort. Uh, I went B-minus on this for the 44 seconds at the end of the game. He was an A-plus. For the rest of the game, he was probably about a C or a D. So I was gracious enough to move him back up to a B. B minus. I don't know how you can't if you come back and win the game. There's no way you can you can walk away from either an, oh, a, if they an lose, a or a B on yeah, that one. If they lose the game, then I would have gave him a D. But I gave him a B. My, I gave him a B for simply this: you implement a guy like Josh Gordon, and I don't think I get it. He, he's you want to get him the ball. I think that hurt the offense for half the day. I really do. Trying to get him involved, and I don't think. And and look, I'm not going to say anything bad about Josh, but I think some of the problems they had is Josh doesn't always finish routes. Josh sees things a little bit differently. Uh, and there was probably a couple times he shouldn't have thrown him the ball, but for how he handled the last 44 seconds, we keep saying this is a pass-fail league. You know, we, we, we give a lot of kudos to the Tom Brady's of the world and guys like that for winning games late. Uh, you got to do the same thing for Brian Hoyer. Uh, you know, we talked a lot last week about how in Detroit, Matt Stafford, when he's got Megatron out there, is a different quarterback, and they almost to the point where they don't want Megatron on the field. That's the perfect because example. Because he's able to distribute the ball to other right. guys. That is a perfect example. If you watch Detroit, how many bad throws come from just forcing it to, to Megatron, I think that's what you see right now with, with Hoyer. Uh, let's go to Kenny Rhoda. Kenny, great Brian Hoyer. I actually gave him a C. It's a C minus up there, but that's my bad because when Eric asked me for the grades yesterday, I was grocery shopping. So uh, I gave him a C. He was going to get an F from me had they not won that game because of how poorly he played in those last five minutes with the two interceptions. But the fact that he bounced back and made the plays in the last 44 seconds made it uh, made me grade move it up from an F to a C. So I actually gave him a C yesterday. And I don't know if you guys saw the Monday morning quarterback article uh, this morning for Mr. King, but uh, he talked to Mike Pettin, and Mike Pettin said this, guys. Uh, Pettin told me he didn't consider pulling Johnny Manziel, nor is he considering it now. So that's good news for Brian Hoyer and this team moving forward because this is a team that's right in the thick of things. Think about this. If Baltimore wins tonight, everybody in the division will have seven wins going into the last five games, and there's no way you can make a quarterback change that. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Next up, Eric, the referee. All right, the running game got back on track this week. Isaiah Crowell, 12 carries, 88 yards, two touchdowns. Browns averaged over five yards a carry. Grade the running back. Uh, I'll start this off. I'll go. I gave them an A yesterday, I think, finally, and it took a long time for me to kind of settle into the fact that maybe that three-headed monster was a bad idea, and I think actually it came to fruition yesterday that it was a bad who, idea. Who told you that all? No. Everyone was telling me, but I was okay with it as long as they were winning games. It didn't bother you me. You kept fighting me on it. I, not only you, everybody. I was fighting everybody on that. I will say this, though. Um, Isaiah Crowell would have had 100 yards in yesterday's game if they wouldn't have jumped yeah. away from the running game. So, uh, Kenny, an A. An A from Kenny. Kenny is the first A you've oh, handed the out. BW graduate give it up to Mays. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Isaiah Crowell deserved an A, and I think he deserves to be the feature back. I still don't like this platoon system. I'm with you, Andy. I don't work yesterday, but Isaiah Crowell made some great moves yesterday, some great cuts. He, his field vision was outstanding. Yes, he was helped because Atlanta sucks. They're one of the worst defenses in the NFL, and they can't tackle, and they showed that on a number of plays like Barnage's catch late in that drive. But uh, I, I loved what I saw yesterday out of Crow going home doing it in front of the home crowd. He bought like 30 or 40 tickets, uh, and he was outstanding and one of the keys to yesterday's victory, so I give him an A. Tim. 
A for me as well. I mean, how can you not give him an A? You're talking about a rookie running back out there averaging over seven yards a carry. Uh, he was outstanding. He was explosive. He made great cuts. He, you could tell he was uh, doing. The, he was uh, reading the plays the right way. The offensive line did an outstanding job getting movement uh, at the point of attack. So uh, it, it's definitely an A for me. You know, we talk about redemption for Josh Gordon, but you talked about this last night yeah. on Sports Sunday. That's what yesterday was all about for Crowell, and I don't know that most of Northeast Ohio understood it. Right. Most of Northeast Ohio doesn't understand that Crowell was, and I, I use this, he was like the Maurice Claret, LeBron James of, 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 North, you know, of Georgia. Uh, he goes to the University of Georgia. He's the, the player of the year, his rookie season, and then he's kicked out. This is the first time he got to go back to his home state and say, hey, I know there's been a lot of negativity about me, but I've turned my life around as well. I thought he played phenomenal. I'm, I'm kind of with Kenny. I want to see this kid get 20 carries. I think with 20 carries, with his vision, his vision is phenomenal. They throw that pit, they run that pitch play. We talked about this last night. That pitch play where it looks like it's supposed to go wide right and he can cut it back and, and find holes. Um, on turf, that kid is going to be special. I gave him A minus. I could have given him A. Uh, I just wish they would have ran the ball maybe 10, 15 times more, to be completely honest. And then you brought up another great point. By the end of the game, just to make sure that you saw oh. how he was holding the ball. Fourth quarter, guys, he had the ball with two hands on it. You know they've been on him. It's almost like the program. It's, I, think, I think when he goes around the facility in Berea, they're all trying to knock it out. He understands the importance of ball security after what everybody's been on him about over the last couple of weeks. Eric, the referee, next. All right, Browns wide receivers, obviously the return of Josh Gordon, 16 targets. You had the one bad drop by Miles Austin in the end zone, but besides that, pretty good. What do you Andre, you go. Uh, I gave him a B plus. I think uh, I, the only thing I've had a problem with is, is don't overdo it because you have Josh Gordon. There's nothing wrong with, with going to Andrew Hawkins. You know, Eric just hit on one. There was a bad drop by Miles Austin. And when you're Miles Austin, you've got to catch that ball that he did drop. Uh, but I like how they used everybody. Did Taylor Gabriel play, though? Honestly, yeah. he was out there. Yeah, there, what he end up with? Uh, Gordon makes everybody better, but I think Hawkins is the guy that's really going to win in this situation. Hey, when you target Josh Gordon 16 times, you can't throw a game. <laughs> True. You know the 16 targets was the most any receiver has had this year other than uh, the guy from Chicago, not Brandon Marshall, but the other guy. Jeffries. Jeffries. That's, or, yeah, that's the most any receiver has gotten this year. But they're going to put him on a pitch count. Yeah, he's on a pitch count, but he had the most targets of any guy this He just season. didn't say he's going to get to throw 300 pitches in a game. That was the only problem. Uh, for me, I'll make it easy. Uh, well, I said this all last week. The fact that Josh Gordon's on the field changes everything. Miles Austin benefited. Andrew Hawkins benefited as well. And so that's what you get. You get more dynamic uh, offense there, and you're going to be able to do more things. And I think the other wide receivers, while you might say they weren't targeted as much, they were, they were effective yesterday except for – Miles Austin dropping the touchdown pass. Kenny Rota, wide receivers. I ended up giving them a B, guys. There was some miscommunication, and that's to be expected, but it almost proved costly yesterday. The Miles Austin drop was uh, terrible. You, you can't have that, not at this time of the season. And I thought Josh Gordon on the, the one interception in the end zone could have made a better effort of trying to help his quarterback out who threw it up there for him to go get. So that's why I ended up giving him a B. Tim. I, I went A-plus. I thought they were outstanding yesterday as a group. You know, you bring a guy in who hadn't played in 10 weeks, and he gives you 120 yards at the wide receiver position, and then he opens everything up for all the other guys. Hawkins was able to play his normal uh, natural slot position, and he was great. Put him in those one-on-one -on -one situations, and his run after the catch ability was great. 322 yards through the air, so it, it was an A-plus for me. Eric, the referee, next. All right, the uh, Browns' run defense got back uh, on track only allowing 2.7 yards of carry, and the takeaways continue. Two more today. Andre, you start. I give them a B. I thought they were solid. I think uh, it plays into Atlanta. They, their offense is, I mean, they're, they're a passing team. I thought Joe Hayden had another phenomenal game against another big-time receiver. I think what he did against Julio Jones helped them tremendously. Uh, I, I thought they were solid. And I think Eric hit on it. They stopped the run better. Uh, than they have most of the season. I'm worried about the Gibson injury. I don't know how many more of these injuries, guys, uh, they can have and, and still put a decent defense out there. You know what? Something else. I'll give credit to Jabal Sheard. I did a show with him last Monday, and he damn near had to get carried out of the restaurant we were in. And he told me, he goes, I've got about 50 tickets for family members. He goes, I'm not giving up on playing this week until they absolutely tell me they can't, I can't play. Yeah. Uh, for him to play yesterday was huge. He didn't have a huge impact. But I think just having his body on the field made a big statement for the team. Uh, I went B-plus on this. I'm still trying to figure out how they're doing it with all the injuries. And 
Uh, I mean, the fact that we were talking about Carlos Dansby possibly playing yeah. uh, late in the week, I mean, this is some miracle stuff going on right there. I'm not quite sure how they're piecemealing this thing together, but they made it happen, and they only gave up 60, what, three yards on the ground yesterday. Tim, running backs. Or defense. Uh, yeah. or defense. Sorry, I give defense. it an eight. You know, I thought, I thought they were, the defense was great yesterday. The run defense was awesome. Paul Kruger and that pass rush was after Matt Ryan the entire game. He rarely had time to set his feet, step up into the pocket. And they created some turnovers. You know, I thought Joe Hayden, as you guys mentioned, played a great game. He gave up one touchdown, but he did get the interception back. Uh, but I, I thought the defense was great. They probably won the game for the Browns. Tim, we got to teach you some bitter classes. You need, like, a good two, three years in media just so you can be bitter <laughs> when you do great. <laughs> Yeah, All right, Kenny, laugh. I ended up giving him a, a B overall, guys. Uh, as I, I watched that game yesterday, I thought the play calling, again, I think Mike Smith's going to get fired. His play calling uh, was terrible. Uh, and the, the fact that their running back, Steven Jackson, you can time his 40 time with a sundial. <laughs> That's how old and slow he was. And I think that contributed more than anything uh, to, to the run game and the, the lack thereof against one of the worst run defenses in, in the NFL. But – uh, the Browns, they made enough plays to win yesterday. Uh, it was the offense who ended up winning this game late, not the defense. The defense gave up the go-ahead three points, and so I gave them the a B. Eric, next. All right, special teams. Browns only putted one time yesterday. Uh, surprising. And uh, Billy kind of four or five, the only missed field goal on that 60-yard field goal debacle right before the half. Great special teams. Kenny, we'll go with you first on special teams. Special teams, I ended up giving them a B-plus. Whenever you hit a game-winning field goal, uh, you, you have to be happy with that if you're the special teams coach. They've been so up and down. They've been like the, the magnum at, at Cedar Point. So many ups and downs, twists and turns all year long. Uh, again, we talk about horrible decisions that were made by the Falcons in their play calling and clock management. How about the horrible decision by Devin Hester to cut it back inside on that uh, play right yeah. before the end of the half. If he stays outside, guys, he goes the distance, and he's one of the greatest, if not the greatest, return guys in the history of the NFL. And how he didn't see that, they had it set up for him to go right down the sidelines. And so the Browns lucked out on that one. Uh, that's why I gave him a B-plus instead of an A. Tim? I gave him an A-plus. Four field goals. Game-winning field goal, uh, no no issues on special teams. You know, we talk about when the Browns win a game, there's normally not a big game-changing mistake on special teams. Yesterday they didn't have that either, luckily, because they got Hester to the ground, unfortunately. So, uh, you know, I gave them an A+. Plus. Uh, you know, I gave them a, a B. I thought they were really solid in what they did. Uh, and, and Cam with Kenny, what was Hester doing? Not staying on the outside. That's a touchdown. That changes the game completely if that doesn't happen. By the way, did you guys see Josh Cribbs' first uh, kickoff return? I was waiting for this. Keep for going. the Colts. I was waiting. 30 Go. plus yards. Uh, he's in shape. Played and pretty well for the yard, Colts. 80 yard return that got called back. Yeah, and had an 80 yarder that was returned that called back. I just hope it doesn't happen when he comes here in a couple of weeks. And he's, he already texts me and he goes, You know, I love the Browns, but I'm going to make them pay. Just remember that. No, I don't blame him. Uh, special teams, I went, uh, what I go, B? Yeah, you yeah, went, I went B. B. Uh, no, I went A on this. Yeah, how can you not go A? They had a game-winning field goal. I'm still not quite sure. Joel Bentonio alone is worth an A for what he did yesterday. The backup guard? What are you throwing a yellow flag at me? Wait, come no, on. Your grades. What? No, oh, no, your grades. Look, on the paper, in our paper right here in yeah. front of us. It says, it says B. It's, uh, and actually, it says Special Teams A. You're special looking at Teams coaches. A. All right, I was looking at the coach. Yeah. All right, read move, your paper better. Let's move forward then. Give us the next one as I give you back your flag. <laughs> All right, uh, Coach Mike Patton, uh, grade him. <laughs> go Patton, ahead, since you said it. Go ahead. <laughs> you go. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm still trying to figure out what happened at the end of the first half. They were smart enough to have the timeouts at the end of the game to get, put themselves yeah. in a the position to win. Um, you know, he's a rookie coach. There are rookie mistakes that are made here. There are some things that every once in a while you're shaking your head. Did they abandon the run too early? I don't know if that's him or that's Kyle Shanahan. Uh, but when it comes to being able to put together this defense, they're still able to go out there and be effective. And I'm still, it's smoke and mirrors to me. I yeah. don't know how they're doing it with all the injuries. Andre. Best thing that they did yesterday, guys, is they dialed up the, the pass rush Jim O'Neill did in that fourth quarter when the game was on the line. They brought Keewan Williams in back-to-back -back plays. We thought this defense would be more aggressive and more blitz-worthy. Maybe the injuries have stopped that. But I like when the game was on the line, guys, they went aggressive and they didn't go to the Marty uh, Schottenheimer, let's drop, every, you know, let's drop eight guys and hope they can't pass it. I, I give them a B because there were some decisions that make you scratch your head. But the decision to blitz late, I am all for. Kenny Roder in the KennyRoder.com studios. What do you got? 
ended up giving them a B, guys. Uh, some of the things that Andre touched on uh, right there, uh, I agree wholeheartedly with. Why they weren't running the football more when Hoyer was having a tough day is beyond me against one of the worst, like I said, defenses in the entire NFL run defense, pass defense, overall defense. And, and that uh, forced Hoyer to throw the football. And he was trying to make too many plays when the plays were there to be had, in my opinion, with Crowell and West running the football. But with the blitzes that, that Andre talked about, you saw it from the right side, from the left side, on, on two consecutive plays. I love the aggressiveness, and, and so I ended up giving him a beat. Tim. You guys said it all perfectly. I gave, I gave him a B plus, you know, other than the mistake before the half to try to kick the long field goal. I thought he did a great job, especially with all the injuries on the defensive side of the ball and still putting those guys in position to make plays and an opportunity to win games. I, I thought he did a nice job other than the one mistake before the half. So it was a B plus for me. All right, bonus question for everybody. Ohio State, will they remain at number six? Kenny Rhoda. Yes, they'll remain at number six. It's still a two-touchdown win at home. They dominated the first and the fourth quarter. And with everything that went on this weekend in college football, uh, with the, the game between BC and FSU coming down to the wire, FSU barely wins. If you don't move them out of the top four, you can't move Ohio State out of number six. So the Buckeyes stay there uh, at number six, and they beat Michigan this week by at least three touchdowns. Tim Couch, college football rankings, will they switch? Uh, I don't think so. I think they're going to stay the same. I think Ohio State will stay right where they're at for now. But, uh, you know, there's still some football to be played, and they just got to keep winning games. You know, the way Florida State is playing and all their games are coming right down to the end, you would think that they're not going to be able to pull those games out in the end like that. So, so someone's going to lose, you know, and then uh, Mississippi State still has uh, to play uh, Ole Miss. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, I think they stay exactly where they're at. I, I agree with both of these guys. They, they hit on it perfectly. But this week is a big week. Uh, you know, Romeo Cornell used to say to me, he, he worried more about Thanksgiving week than any other week because people get families coming in. College players, the same thing. You got the Egg Bowl this week uh, with the Mississippi-Mississippi State game. You have Auburn and Alabama coming up. I think somebody is going to, you know, Texas. Doesn't uh, TCU play TCU Texas, Texas on Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving Day? I just feel like we're going to have some movement coming this week, and I hope that Ohio State takes advantage of Michigan and beats them by 21, like Kenny said. But I think this time next week we'll be talking about a top-four team in the Buckeyes. Tim, while we got you there, pitfalls of Thanksgiving week for college football teams. The pitfalls of Thanksgiving yeah, week, you said? Yeah, the pitfalls of them. Yeah, it's just a lot of distraction. You know, I think, uh, you know, you guys said it's, it's, you know, family coming in town. It's, you know, plans and, you know, getting together and all that kind of stuff. So there, there's definitely a lot of stuff to take your focus off of what it should be other than the game. So, uh, you know, the guys have to be extra focused and, and get some extra time in the film room because there, there's certainly a lot of distractions. All right, Tim, thank you so much. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you next Monday. Okay, thanks, guys. Enjoy Atlanta. Kenny, uh, thoughts?